Wild animals to Costa Rican native people in pre-Columbian times were part of everyday life. This was reflected in their artwork and their pottery. Bats were meaningful to these people and they were represented on many artifacts unearthed over the last centuries. Artifacts with bat images in jade came from Guatemala, those in gold came from South America. As now, there were happy people and not so happy people in pre-Columbian times. In the Mayan culture, over a thousand years ago, bats represented the night, death, sacrifice, but also sex and fertility. That's a strange combination. In Mayan mythology, Kamazots was a bat god, more specifically translated as the Death Bat. One of the many Mayan kingdoms was located at the base of a cliff from which hundreds of thousands of bats emerge every night. This city-state was Pachan, or Citadel Sky. It's now known as El Zots, the main word for bat, and it's located west of Tikal in Guatemala's Petén region. Sometime between the founding of the city in 350 BC and its end in 744 AD, the king of El Zots gave a special mirror as a gift to the king of Huaca, Peru, a kingdom to the west. The mirror somehow ended up near the present-day city of Bagaces in Guanacaste, Costa Rica. It's now on display at the Jade Museum in San Jose. The glyphs on the back of the mirror clearly explain this gift. That is if you can read Mayan glyphs, of course. Mirrors were made of obsidian and or pirate and glued together with bad guano. No shit. Mirrors got a great significance for the Mayans. There were ways to forecast the future and a portal for supernatural forces. That's a pretty handy device. The glyph with the vertical fish is the symbol for the kingdom of El Zots. If the king only knew that his city would someday be called the Bat instead of Citadel Sky, he should have kept the mirror. I decided to see if the bats are still flying over these ruins of El Zots. So we set up an expedition to Guatemala. The jumping off point for the trek is from the island of Flores, in the large lake of Lago Petén, Itza. Mayan blood still flows through the people of this region, which is known for lumber and chewing gum extraction, also for oil and corn planting and a lot of cattle raising. Also many tourists come to visit the famous ruins of Tikal. In small town, the north of Flores, is called Dos Aguadas. It has a cooperative that organizes walking treks to El Zots and Tikal. All supplies are taken in by horses. Zots lies within a large protected area just west of Tikal National Park. The division between agriculture use and wild area is striking. Buenos dias. We are about to enter the biotope of El Zots. The way will be long, six hours hike, more or less, until the famous pyramids of El Zots, the god of bats in Mayan language.
Finally, after 24 hour kilometer walk in the shadow of this giant Seba, the sacred uh, tree of life for the Mayan civilization, look, we are here, the entrance to El Zotz. An orange-breasted falcon is ready to hunt bats, while spider monkeys were jumping all around us. Here we are at the base of the cliff, the cliff where all the bats come out, thousands, hundred thousands. Let's see what happened. One of the species in the cliffs, the Mexican funnel ear bat, comes out from below. to the Devil's Temple of the Zotz Complex. This way. Este árbol se llama puntero, el nombre. Eh, los mayas lo utilizaban para pintar, para pintar los templos, los, los vasijas, los vasos, las estelas, todo. Temple of Tikal. Donde? Tikal. You can see Temple 4 and a little bit of Temple 5. This is the pyramid of El Zotz where the lintel was found, the wooden door. spider monkeys. This is Chico Zapote uh, or known as Zapotillo. The wood, this wood was used to make the lintel, the wooden door of the entrance of El Zotz. Here we are 
on one of the important temples of Sots, El Complex of Del Diablo, better known as the Temple of the Night Sun. Telakwan, Sho Colon, Arin Sali Sali Templo, Re Las Maya, Re Limascarón, Ainli Okebal, Re Nap. Or inside, I just went to the corner because from the moment you touch the walls, they break. the entrance of a temple. In one of these temples were found 17 teeth of the Megalodon, the prehistoric shark monster. They probably found some of those teeth or maybe they even got an encounter, but they were worshiping this in so many tales from the Mayans. The cooks the shark monster was depicted on glyphs, on ceramic, on vessels. This is the altar of the main plaza. Probably here were a lot of sacrifices done. One of the reasons maybe this one of the aguados, the water reservoirs dried up. Others also for the gods of the Mayans. Um, maybe even were here, exactly the spot where the children were sacrificed, who were found in the tomb of the royal king. Here we are in El Zots. One of the reasons El Zots was uh, built over here, two natural water reserves. One here at our camp, the other one at the Devil's Complex, uh, the, the complex of the Night Sun. From here, it's an eight hour walk to Tikal. time first they were friends the civilization of Sats with the civilization of Tikal and after that there was a big kingdom just on the border from Guatemala and Mexico and all these little kingdoms here fought together against Tikal. Tikal won there's a, a little glyph in one of the pyramids of Tikal who describes the war against the Zots. That shows the attack came on the 4th of February 744. Zots was wiped out and never recovered. Tikal continued to flourish, but new research indicates that the Teotihuacan from central Mexico, some thousand kilometers away, destroyed the city on the 16th of January 378 AD. However, all the Mayan civilization in lowland Mesoamerica had collapsed by 900, probably due to soil erosion, deforestation, drought and overpopulation. Bats continue to emerge from the cliffs of El Zots as they have for thousands and thousands of years despite humans and their war. 